Hello everyone, this is R.H. Chandar from KP Gate Classes and in today's video we will look into the concept of BOD and COD mainly that is biological oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand. Before I start with the topic, if I briefly introduce it to you, this comes under the subject of sewage treatment. So the topic we are looking into is BOD that is biological or biochemical oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand. We will mainly focus on these two terms. However, we will also discuss some related terms like total oxygen demand TOD, NBOD that is nitrogen BOD and you also have CBOD, carbonaceous BOD, you also have BOD5. So we will briefly discuss all these terms, what is the meaning of it. By the end of this video, this session, you will get to know these details as well. These are related concepts to BOD and COD. So this will be the discussion part of BOD and COD in the lecture. This particular topic of BOD and COD, this comes under the subject of sewage treatment, which is a part of syllabus for most of the competitive examinations, including DD architectural assistant, HPSC assistant town planner, and also UPSC, as, uh, the Union Public Service Commission deputy architect. It's a part of syllabus for most of these examinations. So this comes under the subject of sewage treatment. So in the session for today, we will not cover the complete topic of sewage treatment. It is a lengthy topic in itself. We are looking into a small area of it, which is BOD and COD, biological oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand. Towards the end of this session, we will also practice some past DDA questions and, exam and questions from other competitive exams also in the field of architecture and planning because BOD and COD is an important topic for the competitive exams in the field of both architecture and planning because sewage treatment is a common topic for architecture and planning examinations. Right? So uh, let us look into the details of what is BOD and COD. As I told you the full form, BOD stands for biological oxygen demand or biochemical oxygen demand. COD stands for chemical oxygen demand. So both BOD and COD, they have the same purpose. They basically are used as a measure to quantify the level of pollution. Basically, if you're having a wastewater sample, for so what is the use of BOD? That's the first thing you need to know. What is the use of it? Say if you're having a wastewater sample, In a given wastewater sample, if you want to check the level of contamination, level of contamination due to organic pollutants, if you want to measure the level of pollution due to organic, what are organic pollutants? Carbon based pollutants, basically carbonaceous matter like sugars and fats, which is present in large quantities in sewage. So the main focus of sewage treatment is to remove the organic pollutants. That is basically the carbonaceous matter, sugars and fats. So how much, how, what is the quantity of pollution present? What is the quantity of organic pollutants present in a given wastewater sample? That is measured in terms of BOD and COD. Both BOD and COD are used as a measure to know how much organic pollutants are present in a given wastewater sample. So, however, if both are measuring the same thing, why do you have these two different measures? Why can't we measure only one? All these points, we will you will get a clarity moving further. So, first thing, BOD and BOD, it is not a treatment process. Remember, many students get confused over here. They think BOD or COD, it is a treatment process. No, BOD, biological oxygen demand and also chemical oxygen demand, these two are just a measure of the level of pollution. They are used to check how much pollution is present. It's not used as a treatment process. It is used to check how much pollution is present. So uh, if you look into the standards also, in standards like URDPFI guidelines or the environment protection uh, rules in, of 1986 published by the Union Government, the Central Government of India, all these establish standards of effluent and all. So basically if you are having wastewater, so wastewater is first taken to a sewage treatment plant where the treatment process is done. Once the treatment is done, before you leave out the wastewater into the environment, these values are checked because there are standards also for this. Like for example, as per URDPFI guidelines, BOD should not be more than 30 milligram per liter before leaving out the wastewater after treatment into the water bodies. You cannot, if it is more than 30, you cannot throw it into the water bodies. You still need to purify it. You need, you still need to treat it. So what is sewage treatment? Sewage treatment is basically treating the wastewater before leaving it out into the environment so as to control the water pollution and land pollution. How can you control that pollution? By minimizing the BOD and COD value. So, so this is basically to check the pollution level in simple terms. 
so that's the introductory point you should be clear about bod and cod are a measure of level of pollution mainly caused by the organic pollutants that is carbonaceous matter present in sewage in excess quantities and there are standards also we will also discuss about the standards moving further i gave you an example it should not be more than 30 mg per liter for effluent which is released into inland water bodies as per URD PFI guidelines. I will talk about these standards again towards the end. But first let us focus on the conceptual part. So as far as questions are considered in DDA and also in other competitive examinations including UPSC, the questions generally are based either on definitions. So you need to know the definition of what is BOD and COD. Second thing you need to know the standards. So there are standard conditions at which BOD is measured. There are standards for how much the BOD level is permissible. So these standards also are important. That's number two. Third thing you also get conceptual questions like the meaning with the relation between BOD and COD how to interpret the results after measuring BOD and COD values how do we interpret the results conceptual questions are also asked so all the three types of definition based questions standard based questions concept based questions where you interpret the results all the three types of questions are asked in the competitive examinations if you watch this video towards the end all these three areas will be clear for you from the aspect of COD, BOD and also the related terms. So try to focus. If you are preparing for competitive examinations, make sure you get in touch with us at KP Gate classes. You can enroll into our batches as well. Also, you can uh, most important is to make a note. E even if you're watching this video, maintain a note if you're preparing for any examination. That's very important ma maintaining your running notes. So that's about the introductory point. The use of BOD and COD. It is used to measure the level of pollution in voice wastewater sample. Now let us try to understand the definition. What exactly is BOD or biological oxygen demand? Biological or biochemical oxygen demand. Let me write it as So from the name itself you understand it is the oxygen demanded oxygen demanded by the biological organism so it is biological biochemical right so the definition is biological oxygen of BOD is the quantity of dissolved oxygen consumed or demanded by the microorganisms the aerobic bacteria right so write down the definition we will discuss about the details of it but firstly just to summarize it it is the oxygen consumed by which by the biological organisms which type of organisms the aerobic bacteria aerobic bacteria is a bacteria which basically decomposes organic matter in the presence of oxygen so because it is happening in the presence of oxygen we call it as aerobic bacteria so the oxygen consumed by aerobic bacteria to decompose the wastes so for example if you have a sample say you have one liter of sample so it's generally measured BOD is measured in the units of milligram per liter these unit based questions also can be asked in the competitive examinations so it's generally measured in milligram per liter so basically per liter of sample for every one liter of sample you take one liter of wastewater sample and check how much oxygen is consumed DO dissolved oxygen how much dissolved oxygen is consumed by the microorganisms to decompose the organic matter present in it that's called as biological oxygen demand i'll give you the definition we'll further discuss it and understand how exactly it is done in practical terms also first write down the definition of what is bod it is quantity of dissolved oxygen quantity of dissolved oxygen in brackets you can write do quantity of dissolved oxygens the quantity of dissolved oxygen consumed by the aerobic bacteria quantity of dissolved oxygen consumed by the aerobic bacteria during biological decomposition process during biological decomposition process quantity of dissolved oxygen consumed by the aerobic bacteria during biological decomposition process of the organic pollutants present in a given wastewater sample present in a given wastewater sample 
that's the definition of what is BOD it is the quantity of dissolved oxygen consumed by aerobic bacteria during the biological decomposition process of the organic pollutants present in a given wastewater sample so basically it is measured in units of milligram per liter the reason being you take one liter of sample and check how many milligrams of dissolved oxygen is consumed by bacteria present in this sample uh, so it is done at a standard period of time across a given temp for at a given temperature so there are standard setups for it so at a given temperature generally it is 20 degrees centigrade over five day of incubation period that's how it is generally done so at that particular experimental condition for one liter of sample how much dissolved oxygen is consumed by bacteria that's called as BOD now if uh, think in practical terms if there's a sample and a lot of oxygen is consumed by the bacteria what does it mean it does it mean high pollution or low pollution obviously it means high pollution because the bacteria is consuming a lot of oxygen it means there are there are a lot of pollutants present in it if the bacteria is consuming less oxygen it means there is less decomposition process going on there is less level of pollution so based on the oxygen consumed by the bacteria we can estimate if the oxygen consumed is more you can say pollution is higher if the oxygen consumed is less you can say the pollution also is less so that's the basic relation between BOD and pollution and that's how it is used as a measure to quantify the organic pollution present organic pollutants present in a given wastewater sample now to understand uh, some key areas in within this definition first thing you need to understand is this is a measure of organic pollutants second thing you need to understand is it is an aerobic process where bacteria does it in the presence of oxygen and most importantly understanding dissolved oxygen also so what is dissolved oxygen uh, so this bacteria the aerobic bacteria which we are talking about this consumes dissolved oxygen like we uh, what do we consume to live? We consume the atmospheric oxygen, oxygen present in the air, which is released from the photosynthesis of plants. We use that and we live based on that atmospheric oxygen. Whereas aerobic bacteria, just like other uh, life present in the water bodies like fish, how does fish live? It consumes oxygen using the gills from the water. It uses dissolved oxygen. Just that way aerobic bacteria also consumes the dissolved oxygen and based on by consuming that dissolved oxygen it basically uh, decomposes the organic matter present in the water sample now what is the source of dissolved oxygen there was a question once in dda asked based on the relation between dissolved oxygen levels and the time of the day when is it high when is it low we will look into the past dda questions from this area also but just to give you an area uh, give, give you an idea of what is dissolved oxygen just like how plants during photosynthesis will release atmospheric oxygen into the air in water bodies also you have water plants aquatic plants so these aquatic plants they use the sunlight whenever sunlight is available the aquatic plants consume in the presence of sunlight because they also have chlorophyll so in the presence of sunlight they also undergo photosynthesis and they release dissolved oxygen into the water or they release oxygen into the water which exists in the form of dissolved oxygen in the water bodies so dissolved oxygen it is ma mainly dissipated from the plants not only that dissolved oxygen also is taken directly from the atmospheric atmospheric oxygen so whatever atmospheric oxygen is present when it comes into contact with water it also dissolves into water to, to some extent it is generally higher in moving water bodies in rivers and all wherever there is more movement more dissolved oxygen levels can be observed compared to stagnant water bodies like ponds or lakes there is the dissolved oxygen due to atmospheric uh, 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 oxygen dissolving into water that's lower so basically dissolved oxygen is oxygen which is dissolved in the into the water which is majorly sourced from the dissolving process of the atmospheric oxygen or from the oxygen released by the photosynthesis process of the aquatic plant matter which is having chlorophyll in it so this uh, dissolved oxygen is naturally present in water streams and this dissolved oxygen is consumed by the bacteria and how much oxygen is consumed that is checked to measure BOD now to com uh, coming to the mathematical part how exactly is it measured what is the test procedure for measurement of BOD let us also get a brief understanding on it so the process goes there are different approaches but the widely used process is you take a standard sample I'm talking about one liter of sample but in practical terms you take a smaller sample of around 200 to 300 milliliters and then you proportionately increase the value as 
mg per liter milligram per liter for ease of understanding purpose because we are not looking into the math of it that's not as that's not what is important for competitive exams point of view you don't have numericals as such but conceptual things are asked so let, to understand the concept let us talk about a one liter of sample it's not necessarily always taken as one liter sample so you take one liter of sample for example for every one liter of sample we measure the initial dissolved oxygen level this also is measured in milligram per liter basically how many milligrams of so basically you measure in one liter of sample how many milligrams of dissolved oxygen is present initially do initial initial dissolved oxygen level then you place this particular sample in experimental conditions so generally this experimental conditions include then you place this ex this particular sample in experimental conditions experimental conditions generally include uh, five day incubation period so you leave it out for five days the surrounding temperature is generally 20 degrees centigrade and this is done generally in a dark room in a dark space dark space because you don't want any sort of photosynthesis to occur in it if there is any chlorophyll or algae present in it or if there is any matter which can release oxygen and increase the do level you don't want to interfere or increase the dissolved oxygen level you want the initial dissolved oxygen level to stay stable so for that it is placed in dark room to ensure that no more photosynthesis can occur in that sample so generally in a dark room over five day incubation period at 20 degrees centigrade this these are the standard conditions at which bod is measured uh, so this particular measurement approach to quantify the pollution level this was first introduced in early 1900s around 1905 to 1908 in the united kingdom so that's when they standardized these uh, it set up say five day and 20 day 20 degrees centigrade incubation period i'll talk about these standards further in indian context also but this was uh, initially given standardized ex uh, experimental conditions uh, so at this particular experimental condition you place the sample for five days and after that you again take out the sample from the experimental conditions and you check the dissolved oxygen level again do final Final as in at the end of the experiment, what is the dissolved oxygen level again in milligram per liter? Whatever change has occurred, the remaining balance, initial level you know, and final level you know, say initial level is something like 300 milligram per liter. That was the initial level, just as an example, that was the initial dissolved oxygen level. Say after five days of incubation, incubation is basically letting out the microorganisms to grow in the presence of oxygen, they'll decompose the matter. And after five days of incubation, if you check the, uh, bio, uh, the dissolved oxygen level, obviously it will become less. Why? Because the bacteria has consumed some level of oxygen to decompose the organic matter. Say it is becoming 150 milligram per liter. What is the balance? What is the level of oxygen consumed by the microorganisms it is the remaining 150 milligram per liter is consumed so this becomes the biological oxygen demand so in simple terms bod is the change in the dissolved oxygen levels before and after the incubation incubation period generally is five day period this also was asked in dda examination once so what are the standard temperature and incubation period for bod measurements so standard bod which was standardized in early 1900s that was five day incubation 20 degree centigrade incubation period so because you are measuring it at a five day incubation period to specify that five day we write it as bod5 so that's what BOD5 is. BOD5 is basically the specification of bi biological oxygen demand over a five day incubation period. Why is it important? See, to standardize things, basically uh, the level of uh, decomposition process also depends on the number of days. If you just do it for one day, the level of decomposition may not be 100%. So they have generally observed so the actual origin of this five day incubation period. Uh, as I told you, it was developed in uh, UK for specifically for the pollution level uh, to, uh, to, to measure the pollution level in the river in London. So basically the time taken for the river to drain away away from the city or move away from the city, they considered it to be uh, so move away from the city of London and reach to the sea almost. It takes a period of five days. That's the origin of the set. That's what is generally attributed to the five day incubation period. However, leaving that aside, remember BOD5 is basically checking biological oxygen demand by the organisms over a five day incubation period. So that's how you measure biological oxygen demand. It is measured in terms of the change in dissolved oxygen level, difference in the dissolved oxygen level before and after the incubation. 
right so that's the concept of beer so you can go back to the definition now it will give you better sense biological oxygen demand is the quantity of milligrams of carbon milligrams how many milligrams of dissolved oxygen is consumed by the aerobic bacteria during biological decomposition process of organic present organic pollutants present in a given wastewater sample so that's about the uh, understanding of biological oxygen demand bod just to add to this so as i told you this is how it is measured change in the dissolved oxygen level over five day incubation period and that's what bod5 is now just to add few points to it there are two or three things in addition to whatever we discussed you need to understand point number one is uh, there is something called as uh, so as far as standards so there is five day incubation at 20 degrees centigrade uh, as i told you but as per urd pfi guidelines If you look into the URD PFI guidelines of uh, the effluent standards, what is effluent standards? As I told you, effluent is basically the wastewater after treatment. So once you take the wastewater sewage to a sewage treatment plant, sewage is taken to a sewage treatment plant STP. The after the treatment you get effluent. Now this effluent, it can either be discharged into land there are two ways of disposal generally for the effluent so the effluent can either be discharged into land which is called as effluent irrigation generally effluent irrigation and this obviously has to be done in controlled levels so it is either disposed into land which is called as effluent irrigation or it is let out into inland water bodies Inland water bodies are basically generally fresh water, lakes, rivers and which are inland, not marine. So for marine bodies that is seas and oceans also there are different standards. I am just focusing on for the lecture now, we are just focusing on these two areas. So the, the sewage treatment plants effluent can either be sent out into land called as effluent irrigation or you can uh, dilute it into the inland water bodies. This process is called as dilution because you are diluting the effluent into the water body. These are the two approaches of disposal. There are standards set for it. So as per URD PFI guidelines, there are effluent standards to meet these conditions. So if you are releasing the effluent into land in the form of effluent uh, irrigation, the BOD of it should not be more than 100. 100 milligram per liter is the maximum limit. So you can remember these standards also. So for effluent irrigation, the effluent standard BOD can be maximum of 100 milligram per liter. That's the maximum BOD. So I'm talking about the standards of biological oxygen demand BOD. It can be a maximum of 100 for effluent irrigation. If you want to release the effluent into water bodies, the maximum limit of BOD is only 30 milligram per liter. So it should not be more than that. That's the maximum limit for BOD. So basically, before you release the effluent into the environment, you check the BOD because BOD is a measure of level of organic pollution. If the BOD is more than 30, you need to still work on the treatment process till you achieve the standard. Only then you can do the dilution into the inland water bodies. Similarly, effluent, you also need to check it before discharging it into the land. If it is more than 100, you cannot do effluent irrigation. You have to further treat it and only then you can irrigate it into the land. Uh, that's how uh, the standards of BOD are with respect to URD PFI guidelines. So these standards which we discussed from URD PFI guidelines point of view, generally URD PFI guidelines, they rarely set up their own standards. So the source for these standards which I am talking about, 30 milligram per liter for dilution into inland water bodies, uh, 100 milligram per liter is the maximum permissible BOD level for the effluent, the sewage effluent after the treatment of the effluent, that should not be more than 100 milligram per liter for effluent irrigation into land. So these standards standards are quoted as from URD PFI guidelines to be taken from Environment Protection Act. Of 1986. So this is the source which they are quoting to uh, uh, Environment Protection Act 1986. Based on this, they have given these standards. So this Environment Protection of Act of 1986, it sets these standards basically as per your PFA guidelines. But just to add to it, this is also very important points in some competitive exams, particularly from planning point of view. You, you get these questions. So effluent standards or standards for sewage treatment or standards for pollution. 
who sets these standards this was a past question in an assistant town planner examination so even though in urdp fi guidelines it is written as environment protection act the act itself environment protection act of 1986 that itself does not directly set the standards for the pollutant levels pollutant levels in water bodies pollution pollutant levels in air it does not directly set up those standards so there is a clause in environment protection act under which there is authority given to the government and the concerned ministry to release rules regarding environment protection and environment pollution so in 1986 itself after the uh, act was passed by the parliament after this particular uh, bill became an act environment protection act under the guidelines of environment protection act a set of rules were published by the central government which is called as environment protection rules of 1986 so that's basically the source so what is the source for the or who sets the standards for pollutant levels the standards for pollutant levels in india these can be referred mainly from environment protection rules of 1986 which was amended multiple times but 1986 is the original notification original uh, environment protection rule so this is the document 1986 so as per the environment protection rules 1986 which set standards for lot of pollutants they also set for the standards of bod of water uh, of sewage effluent so as to control water and land pollution that's something which you can remember now if i talk about the standard conditions if you remember i told you about the 5 day incubation period at 20 degree centigrade so let us also try to understand uh, now that we know the standards with respect to the level of bod you also need to know the standard experimental conditions as recommended by the uh, environment protection rules so whatever values they are giving at what temperature and incubation period are they measured so it is basically at 25 degree centigrade over a 3 day incubation 27 actually not even 25 27 degree centigrade temperature over a 3 day incubation period so the this is the standard temperature and incubation condition under which environment protection rules of 1986 uh, publish the bod values so the bod values which we saw bod should not be more than 30 mg per liter for release in water bodies or 100 mg per liter to be released into land these standards are measured at this temperature for 3 day incubation it's not 20 degree centigrade 5 day incubation so there are two there are different ways of measuring bod the standard bod is measured at 20 degree centigrade for 5 day incubation period as initially published and initially started being used it is used throughout at the same condition however so even in environment protection rules 1986 this is just an interesting additional point for your self uh, understanding you can remember uh, in the original uh, environment protection rules of 1986 the standard temperature and incubation period was 20 degree centigrade and 5 day incubation period itself they changed it under the 1996 amendment so they made a change uh, in the 1996 a uh, new notif uh, new set of environment protection rules with minor changes were done so under those changes they have changed it changed the temperature and incubation period to 27 and 3 respectively so you can remember that as per urdp fi guidelines the maximum limit set for bod for discharge of effluent into water bodies and land that is measured at 27 degree centigrade 3 day incubation period as per environment protection rules of 1986 that's point number 1 Point number two, standard BOD, however, is still measured at 20 degrees centigrade, five day five day incubation period. So remember, and that's the reason to avoid any confusion. Generally, we abbreviate the we write the number also, the incubation period also along with BOD. So that's what BOD five is, right? So that's about biological oxygen demand. I hope that gives you a full picture of biological oxygen demand. Now there are two more things. Uh, to understand before we, that's chemical oxygen demand obviously but before that there are one or two minor points which you need to still understand about bod let us also get that understanding what is nbod and cbod let us look into this difference cbod and nbod so if you just measure bod biological oxygen demand 
uh, the biological organisms can de decompose all the matter which can be oxidized so what do, what does this bacteria do it basically oxidizes the organic pollutants and also inorganic pollutants there are two types of pollutants organic and inorganic organic pollutants are carbonaceous pollutants so in any sample of wastewater you will have there are two types of pollutants organic pollutants that mainly is carbonaceous matter that is sugars and fats carbon and carbon based compounds inorganic compounds include a lot of pollutants mainly you, you can have ammonia nitrites these are present you can write ammonia for example sulfides and also there are a lot of inorganic pollutants also so even ammonia can be nitrified by the nitrifying bacteria that also happens in the presence of oxygen so even ammonia can be oxidized so if you're directly simply measuring BOD without any parameters set to it you will find out the oxygen consumed by both organic and inorganic pollutants but BOD by definition we focus mainly on finding out the pollution due to organic pollutants so that's called a CBOD CBOD is nothing but measure of biological oxygen demand mainly for the carbonaceous wastes now how can we ensure that bacteria is only decomposing carbonaceous waste for that there are nitri uh, the nitrification inhibiting compounds are added there are some chemical compounds which are mixed initially itself so as to neutralize the inorganic material inorganic compounds you stop it from decomposing in the presence of oxygen so you basically to find out cbod that is carbonaceous cod to exactly measure only the organic pollutants you need to add some inhibitors to stop inorganic pollutants from being decomposed or oxidized by the bacteria right so inorganic compounds like ammonia how can they be oxidized so what what is nbod now n is ammonia based or nitrogen based compounds so if you want to measure the biological oxygen oxygen demand of compounds inorganic compounds like ammonia also that's called as nbod so that's the basic difference so you generally start with the letter related to which type of bod you are talking but in general if you do not mention anything biological oxygen demand in general is the level of oxygen consumed by the organic pollutants uh, so basically by the bacteria to decompose the organic carbonaceous matter to make it more clear you can write cbod which is basically the amount of dissolved oxygen consumed by the bacteria to decompose the carbonaceous wastes the amount of oxygen consumed by bacteria there are different types of bacteria in the in the sample the amount of oxygen consumed by the bacteria uh, to decompose the nitrogen based waste like ammonia that's called as nbod so let me just give you a brief idea on the process of uh, nitrification and denitrification so basically in the sewage in wastewater what happens in wastewater is it also has inorganic pollutants or you can call it as nutrients basically like ammonia ammonia is an inorganic compound and this also can be subjected to aerobic digestion so it this also can undergo biological decomposition this also undergo biological decomposition and this also consumes oxygen dissolved oxygen basically so if you are measuring how much dissolved oxygen is consumed by the biological decomposition of ammonia that's called as nbod nitrogen based bod and how what is the process involved in this so there are basically three steps or you can say broadly two steps nitrification and denitrification ammonia which is generally present in the form of nh4 plus you can write it as nhd for now let's not go into the detailed chemistry of it this ammonia by nitrifying bacteria it is subjected to the process of nitrification what is nitrification nitrification is a process where ammonia is converted into nitrites and nitrates nitrites are converted into nitrates by increasing the level of oxygen so initially it is no2 minus then it becomes no3 minus so this are these no3 are called as nitrates so this it's a two step process nitrification is a two step process so questions have been asked from the de in depth process in the past from various competitive exams including in upsc also we'll solve some practice questions also towards the end to just give you an idea biological decomposition of nitrogen based waste mainly ammonia happens in two steps it is nitrification and after nitrification you have denitrification 
So in the process of nitrification, there are two steps again. Ammonia is converted into nitrites, NO2 minus, which are in turn converted into nitrates, that is NO3 minus. Once you get nitrates, there are again a different set of bacteria. Once you get nitrates, again there is a different set of bacteria which is called as denitrification process, denitrifying bacteria. So this is subjected to a denitrification process. Denitrification process is where nitrates are converted into atmospheric nitrogen gas. It is released away from the water. So it's called as denitrification because you're releasing the nitrogen nitrates, you're making nitrogen gas out of it and releasing away from the wastewater sample. So that's how that's the basic cycle under which the ammonia is decomposed or removed from the water, wastewater. If ammonia is present in the wastewater, nitrifying bacteria will convert it into nitrites and nitrates. Denitrifying bacteria will make it into oxy into the nitrogen gas and that is released back into the atmosphere. So this is the cycle of removal of ammonia. And in this complete process, if you see, oxygen is being consumed here. How do you get nitrates and nitrites? By consuming oxygen. Now the oxygen consumed by biological organisms during the nitrification process of ammonia, that's called as NBOD generally. So there's a difference between NBOD, CBOD, BOD5. So all these are related terms you can say. So that's about the overall understanding of the concept of BOD. So under this uh, lecture till now, we looked into what is biological oxygen demand. BOD, we have looked into the meaning of it, the definition, how it is measured, measurement units. We also looked into NBOD, CBOD, BOD5 and also the standards. What is the level permissible as per the environment protection rules of 1986? What change was brought in in the year 1996? The experimental conditions which was changed from 20 degrees to 27 degrees from 5 day incubation to 7, 3 day incubation that was done to meet the climatic conditions of India basically. Uh, so 20 degrees centigrade is not an available temperature, room temperature in Indian condition right. So 27 it was made. So th those standards, so we looked into all these aspects. So we will briefly look into COD, TOD and we will end, the, end this particular session with it. So let us look into the next part of the session that is to understand what is chemical oxygen demand. COD. Now that you know what is BOD, COD is very simple. You will easily understand. So first, let me what is let me know what is chemical. Let me explain you what is chemical oxygen demand. COD. This also from the name itself. So firstly, let me clear you that this also is measured in milligram per liter. From the name itself, you understand it is also how much oxygen is consumed. But this is not the amount of oxygen consumed by bacteria or aerobic organisms. It is the amount of oxygen consumed by chemical processes, by the chemical oxidation. So write down the definition of what is chemical oxygen demand. Quantity of oxygen. Quantity of oxygen consumed during chemical oxidation. during chemical oxidation of pollutants present in a given wastewater sample. So there are some chemicals which are available, you mix those chemicals into the sample and check how much oxygen is consumed to, to chemically decompose, to, to, to chemically oxidize. So I gave you that example how ammonia is getting oxidized into nitrates and nitrates. Similarly, by using chemicals also you can do that process instead of biological processes. Uh, so, but in practical terms, as far as treatment processes are considered, we prefer pre uh, biological conditions. I'll talk about all those later. First, let me tell you that chemical oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen consumed during chemical oxidation process of the pollutants present in wastewater sample. So that's what chemical oxygen demand is. It also is measured. So you take same thing, one liter sample you take. You mix some uh, chemicals into it and under those addition of those chemicals, obviously we are not looking into the detailed chemical reactions here, but due to the action add, addition of those chemical reagents or chemical agents into it, the organic pollutants will get decomposed 
and will precipitate so how much oxygen is being consumed in that process that's measured how it is measured again same thing initial dissolved oxygen final dissolved oxygen both are checked in an airtight container it is done so that atmospheric oxygen is not being consumed so the total oxygen consumed you will get a value that's called as chemical oxygen demand so the only difference now if both are similar both are a measure of pollution why do you have two different things why do you have bod and cod bod is the oxygen consumed only by the biodegradable pollutants whereas cod it is the amount of oxygen consumed by all the pollutants present organic pollutants inorganic pollutants however you can set those experimental conditions if you want to check only cod only the chemical oxygen consumed or chemical oxygen demand only for the organic pollutants you can also measure that you can uh, basically you need to add add those inhibitors to stop the reaction with ammonia and all and you can check how much carbonaceous you can measure only the ncod that is uh, the nitro or carbon based ccod that is only the carbonaceous chemical oxygen demand that also can be measured let me not confuse you by complicating it but in simple terms to understand the difference why do you have these two different things bod and cod because bod measures the level of organic pollution uh, or uh, in terms of only biodegradable pollutants biological processes what we are using here biodegradable pollutants are measured here in chemical oxygen demand both biodegradable and non biodegradable both pollutants are measured biodegradable and non biodegradable pollutants are measured so based on this explanation that bod measures only biodegradable pollutants cod measures both biodegradable and non biodegradable because it's a chemical process which value will be higher so generally chemical oxygen demand will be more than biological oxygen demand in a in a maximum threshold condition both can be equal so cod generally is greater than or equal to cod is either greater than or equal to biological oxygen demand biological oxygen demand can never be more because biologically only bio biodegradable pollutants are measured if everything is biodegradable pollutant if 100% say if you are having a sample and if all the pollutants are biodegradable in it then bod and cod values will become equal but generally if there are non biodegradable pollutants also cod will be higher chemical oxygen demand will be more so the reason why we have these two measures so in sewage treatment and in effluents why do you measure both the things to understand the level of biodegradability so you basically will check a ratio of this bod and cod so cod you generally check bod to cod ratio if both are equal the ratio will be 1 if the ratio is 1 it means 100% of the pollutants are biodegradable so this ratio bod to cod will tell you about the level of biodegradability if the ratio is equal to 1 it means 100% of the pollutants are biodegradable 100% biodegradable pollutants if the ratio is 70% it means 70% are biodegradable so 70% is 0.7 if the ratio of bod to cod is 0.7 if this ratio comes out to be 0.7 it will be maximum one it can never be more than one if it is 7 0.7 it means 7 70% of the pollutants are biodegradable 30% are non biodegradable so bod to cod ratio will tell you about the level of biodegradability of the pollutants that's the reason you have bod and cod two different measures to just summarize bod measures the quantity of biodegradable pollutants in terms of oxygen demand by biological processes cod measures the amount of oxygen consumed by the chemical reactions and it will measure both biodegradable and non biodegradable pollutants and cod is generally greater than or equal to bod if both are equal it means 100% biodegradable all the pollutants present are biodegradable both biologically and chemically equal number of pollutants are being oxidized that's the meaning of it if the ratio which is practically generally less than 1 if it is 0.7 it means 70% biodegradability level is seen why do we measure this because in practical terms in sewage treatment plants we use biological processes to treat the sewage now when we use biological processes you should know how effective it is going to be right so only after checking this you can come up with the approach come up with the process which is being used biological processes are preferred generally because it is cheaper and also chemical processes can cause 
impact onto the environment uh, so to make it cheaper and make it easy in terms of uh, application in sewage treatment we use biological processes or prefer biological processes generally so that's about the concept of bod and cod let me tell you about one last point tod and then we'll practice some questions to end this particular session so if i if you remember if you listen listen to my words carefully if you listen to my expression explanation carefully under chemical oxygen demand cod i told you it is the quantity of oxygen demanded or consumed by the chemical oxidation of pollutants but generally cod is measured only for organic pollutants you can add the word organic that is carbonaceous wastes so generally cod is measured you add a salt or you add chemical which can decompose the carbonaceous pollutants that is only organic pollutants that's what chemical oxygen demand is so as to understand what is the level of biodegradability of carbonaceous matter so both bod and cod they measure the level of organic pollutants present right if you remember in the introduction itself i told you bod and cod they will tell you the level of organic pollutants present in the sample both bod and cod have uh, so to understand the biodegradability level we measure these two things what do we measure uh, by the ratio of cod to bod we or, or basically the ratio between bod to cod bod divided by cod will tell you the level of biodegradability of these organic pollutants that's measured now if you want to also measure organic pollutants plus inorganic pollutants if you want to measure the amount of oxygen consumed to decompose or to oxidize all the pollutants that's called as total oxygen demand tod so that's about what tod is total oxygen demand will basically include the total quantity of oxygen consumed by the chemical processes to decompose the organic and inorganic pollutants examples for organic pollutant examples are carbonaceous matter that is sugars and fats examples for inorganic pollutants i already gave you ammonia which undergoes the cycle which basically in the presence of bacteria and oxygen it will oxidize into nitrates and nitrites that nitrites first and then nitrates and that will further undergo denitrification process where it is released into the air so that's about the overall summary of the lecture so if you remember whatever points at of bod we discussed in detail we also have discussed about cod total oxygen demand tod nitrogen and carbonaceous there are two types of bod we also discussed bod5 and also the standards involved so let us discuss some uh, practice questions and we'll end the session with it uh, i hope the points are clear to you so if we look into some practice questions from the past examinations from this area uh, you can also write down the answers onto your notes and then cross check when i give the answers over here start one by one dissolved oxygen in a stream is dash same throughout the day maximum at noon maximum at night minimum at noon i told you what is the source of dissolved oxygen in water bodies the water plants mainly undergo photosynthesis and will resolve dissolved oxygen is released by them so when is the photosynthesis process most active when the light available sunlight available is maximum so answer is b it is maximum at noon because at noon there is a lot of sunlight photosynthesis is very active so a lot of dissolved oxygen is released into the water body so it is maximum at at the noon generally that's the answer for the first question second question the measure of bod is dash this also is a past dda question measure of bod is dash extent of pollution due to organic compounds industrial waste being dumped into water body required by green plants during night carbon monoxide binding with hemoglobin the answer is a extent of pollution due to organic compounds we have discussed about the definition of bod next this is a question from previous upsc examination for deputy architect uh, so a high bod indicates that water dash is pure has high level of microbial pollution has negligible microbial action has low level of microbial pollution so if bod is higher high bod indicates high level of pollution microbial pollution matlab biological so whichever can be or so basically organic pollution organic compounds so it has high level of microbial pollution that's the answer b next question standard bod is measured this is a past dda question again it is measured standard bod is measured at 20 degree centigrade for 5 day incubation period that's the correct answer however as per the environment protection rules a, a modification was done in 1996 for the guidelines in environment protection rules and that was made to 27 and 3 day incubation however standard bod which is followed throughout the world it is 20 degree centigrade 5 day incubation 
next question the this is also a past uh, upsc question for deputy architect examination the process of conversion of no3 minus no3 minus is basically nitrates the process of conversion of nitrates to nitrogen gas by anaerobic bacteria is called so whatever bacteria is doing be it so basically the nitrification process is done in the presence of oxygen because the ammonia ammonia is nh3 when you need to oxidize it it is done by aerobic bacteria now later on anaerobic bacteria will decompose it into atmospheric nitrogen gas this process is called as nitrification ammonification denitrification anamox so many people by looking into nitrogen they think this is nitrification no this is called as denitrification process c is the correct answer so ammonia being converted into nitrites no2 minus and nitrates no3 minus this is done by aerobic bacteria this is called as nitrification and this conversion of this into nitrogen gas this is called as denitrification which is done by anaerobic bacteria remember this point next last question this is a past gate examination question of architecture and planning low cod to bod ratio of organic pollutants represent dash so they are talking about cod to bod ratio not bod to cod so look into the ratio what they are talking about carefully low cod to bod ratio this is low so if cod to bod ratio is low it mean if it is less it means the numerator is lower cod is less it doesn't mean cod is actually less than bod they are talking about a lower ratio so uh, basically if the chemical oxygen demand is less it is reducing not less than bod but if it is reducing and closing come coming close to bod so basically think in the, think of it in this terms cod to bod ratio if you are finding out what is the minimum value of it its minimum value will be 1 If you check BOD to COD, the maximum value will be one. But if you are checking COD to BOD ratio, the minimum value will be one. It cannot be less than that because denominator cannot be more than numerator in any case. COD, COD numerator is always high. The minimum value is one. So they are talking about low value. Low value means it is coming close to one. If the ratio is coming close to one, it means the level of pollution present it is highly biodegradable, right? So low biodegradability, presence of free oxygen. high biodegradability high arsenic so the answer for this will be high biodegradability of the pollutant if the ratio is coming close to 1 it means almost everything is biodegradable so high biodegradability is the answer here right so look for the ratio carefully if bod to cod ratio is close to 1 then also it is high biodegradability if cod to bod ratio is close to 1 that is if it is lower that also implies high biodegradability i hope the concepts of biochemical oxygen demand chemical oxygen demand total oxygen demand nbod cbod bod5 i think these concepts are clear to you the standards and also the past questions from the examinations we have done that i hope this video this session was helpful for your preparation for the government examinations thank you for watching this video do stay connected with our youtube channel for further updates regarding the preparation for government examinations and you can always enroll into our courses by kp gate classes where we teach all the topics of the syllabus for any given examination so we have batches going on for delhi development authority architectural assistant so if you have applied for that examination do enroll into our batches we also provide coaching for the other government examinations including upsc architectural assistant and also the uh, mainly the deputy architect post you can enroll into our batches to stay prepared for these examinations thank you and we'll meet you soon